let's speak about work function and threshold frequency in the photoelectric effect. In the previous lesson, we said that when light shines on a metal surface, electrons may be ejected or emitted from the surface of that metal. And we spoke about light, so here's my light, and over here is my metal. We said that light contains photons, and photons are packets of energy found in the light. And when that light with the photons shines on the metal, the photons gives its energy to the electrons over here, allowing the electrons to escape from the metal. However, this does not always happen. So in this lesson, we'll discuss when it does happen versus when it does not happen. And it's all got to do with the metal and the properties of the metal and how that compares to the light. So just a quick recap. Remember, as I said, light consists of photons or packets of energy which are found in the lights. And to calculate the energy of the photon, we can use either this formula or we can use this formula. This is in the previous video. So if you missed that, go check that out. And then when the photons hit the metal surface, the photon gives its energy to the electron, potentially. This allows the electrons, remember electrons are negatively charged. So these little blue things, they all have negative charges. Currently, there's a force of attraction between the negative electrons and the positive protons. So here's the protons the positive proton kernels and these little blue things are the electrons and opposites attract. So they're attracted to each other and that's how the electrons are held inside the metal. But when the photons hit the metal surface, they can potentially give their energy to the electrons. And when the electron gets that energy, it therefore has energy to escape the metal surface. But like I said, this doesn't always happen. So what do I mean? If you take a look at this particular diagram, let's pretend that this represents a certain metal. Let's call it metal X. When I shine red light on metal X, no electrons are ejected. However, when I change the light source, I change it to green light, suddenly I have electrons that are being ejected. So why? Why when I use red light, there's nothing, but when I use green light, there's something. As we said, when the light rays with their photons hit the metal surface, the energy contained inside that photon will be transferred to the electron. If that energy is high enough, it has to be a certain value or more. If that energy in the photon reaches that certain value, if it is that certain value or more, let's pretend that the value needed to release an electron is 10 joules, okay, for this metal. If the energy of the light is 10 joules, then there's enough energy to allow the electron to escape. But say, for example, the metal needs 10 joules of energy to allow an electron to escape, but the light only has 9 joules of energy, then there's not enough energy. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm talking about is each metal. So different metals have different properties. They're Atoms are arranged differently. They have different strengths over here holding those electrons inside the metal. So each metal has what we call a work function associated with it. Work function. Now remember work and energy. We can use those two terms almost interchangeably. Work done is equal to energy transferred. So work function is measured in joules. It's like energy. And work function is belongs to the metal. So what I mean by that is different metals have different work functions. And the work function is basically the minimum amount of energy that that metal needs in order to allow an electron to escape from the surface of that metal. So it's as simple as this. If the work function of the metal, so it's work function of the metal. If the work function of the metal, like I said, is 10 joules, then the light's energy, this is the energy of the light, remember? The energy of the light has to also be at least 10 joules, if not more than 10 joules. So greater than or equal to 10 joules, then the electrons will escape. However, if I shine light on the metal, but the energy of the light is not quite 10 joules. Let's pretend that it is 9 joules. That is less than this. Therefore, there is not enough energy to allow the electrons to escape from the metal surface. So basically, the definition for work function is the minimum energy that an electron in the metal needs to be emitted from the metal surface. And like I said, again, if I've got a metal over here, and let's say my metal is sodium, and I have a light. Here's my light. 
my beautiful little light bulb and let's say that I'm shining light. It doesn't matter white lights. I'm just shining light onto the metal surface. Let's pretend the work function of sodium is 13 joules. If my light has an energy, so the energy of my light is anything less than 13 joules. So even if it's 12,99 joules, because the energy of the light is less than the work function, no electrons will be ejected. However, as soon as I take the energy of the light and I make it equal to 13 or bigger than 13, then there's enough energy to allow the electrons to escape from sodium. So if the photons here, have 13 joules of energy, the incident photons, which means the photons in the light shining on the metal. If they have an energy of 13 or more, then electrons will be ejected from the surface of the metal. Now, how do you calculate work function? Remember, work function is like an energy. It is energy, but it's got to do with the metal. So how do you calculate the energy of the photon again? That energy of the photon is equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency of the light. So this is about the light. So that is the energy of the light, and it uses the frequency of the light. So both of these correspond to the light. Work function, because it basically it's also an energy, you calculate it in a very similar way. You take Planck's constant and you multiply it by a frequency, but now it's a special frequency. It's called the threshold frequency. Some curriculums call it the cutoff frequency, but it is called the threshold frequency. So I want you to think of the formula for work function as very similar to the formula for the energy of the light. However, this version of the formula has to do with the metal. So the metal, the metal has a certain threshold frequency, which we measure in Hertz. And the threshold frequency is unique to the metal. H in both formulae is Planck's constant. That is a dot, it's given on your data sheet, Planck's constant. And like I said in the previous video, it's 6,63 times 10 to the negative 34. And then this work function is also, it's the work function of the metal. It's the minimum energy that a electron in the metal needs in order to be emitted from the surface of the metal and it's measured in joules. This is just energy of the light and it's also measured in joules and this is frequency of the light and it's also measured in hertz. So the definition for threshold frequency, also known as cutoff frequency, it's the minimum frequency of light needed to emit electrons from a metal's surface. So we use threshold frequency to work out or to calculate work function. And it goes without saying, I hope, that threshold frequency is directly proportional to work function. So the higher the frequency needed in order to emit an electron, the more energy we need in order to emit the electron. So we can say this, that work function is directly proportional to threshold frequency because H is a constant. Remember that symbol means directly proportional. In the next lesson, we'll go over some questions that has to do with work function and threshold frequency. You don't want to miss it. I'll see you then. Bye, everybody.